All right, it is crunch time in season 2024. We are down to the last four weeks of the season. I'm joined by Drew Zeit, and uh, we're going to discuss the finals race because I reckon, I reckon, Drews, it is clamped down from like, I don't know, 12 or 13 teams to, I reckon, nine now who can oh. genuinely make the finals. In this video, we're going to discuss to what extent we agree there are nine teams competing for it and go through each team individually and just see... You know, who, do, who we think is going to make it, who's likely, who's not. There's a lot of key clashes coming up in the last month of the season. Um, why don't we start with the te- maybe the teams that we think are locks, and mm-hmm. then we'll go through the teams that we think we can probably rule out, and then go through the rest and see who makes it. So any teams in particular that you think you can lock in, and if so, how many? Sydney. <laughs> um, it's such a tough one, man, because... Like, the form of teams has been so fluctuant. I don't even know if that's a word recently. Like, um, Sydney have lost, what, four out of their last six. Carlton have come into some bad form in July. The real big dogs get going in August. So, although you've got Brisbane and Frio, like, two points clear, after a round of footy, like, we've got Essendon at the G, they could fire up and that could propel them back into that. It's so hard. Um, So, how many locks do I have? I think probably the top... Six will probably make it. So Sydney, Brisbane, Frio, Carlton, GWS, Geelong, and I suppose Porter are on the same point. So maybe that that eighth spot is one up the up for grabs. But the dogs currently hold that, and they're in the best form in the comp. Yeah, I agree. I do think it's probably a little more open than that because I just did a ladder predictor then. I did a I did one a few weeks back predicting the rest of the season. I know you just did this. Um, and the last couple of times I've done it, I've had the Bulldogs in fourth. So that implies mm. that a bunch of teams can fall down because it's so even on this ladder. But let's let's just go through a few teams we can lock away without getting too fixated on it. Let's start with Sydney. You mentioned them first. Mm. They're in a massive form slump. So they've lost four of their last five. Their one win was against North Melbourne. They had three close losses against the Dockers, Saints, and the Lions, and then a belting at the hands of the Western Bulldogs. They are the number... Sorry, they're bottom four for contested ball in the last five weeks. They're bottom mm. three from clearances. Their midfield is not firing at all. I know they have injury concerns, in particular, like, down the back. I think Rampy's uh, out this week for sure. Um, Melican's another one. Papley's out for three to five as of today's injury list or yesterday's injury yeah, list. Yeah, McInerney as well. They were distantly first for scores from turnover all year, and now they're below average in the last five weeks. I guess the question there is, I mean... We can lock them away as finalists, but how confident are you that Sydney are going to return for finals? Yeah, all season it sort of looked like it was just going to be Sydney and who was going to stop him. Like the conversation for a lot of the years been pretty much like it's going to be Carlton or Sydney, but um, yeah, they just haven't been able to bring that early season form. It's been a while since we've seen it. Um, we're not the the top footy analysts, but your your top footy analysts, like uh, you know on SEN and all that, they're saying like, if you're too good too early, teams go to work on you and you can get found out. Um, at the same time, it's probably a good time of the year to have a lull in form and then come back strong in August. Um, how confident am I that they're going to win the grand final? I'm not confident that any team can win it really. It's such an even race. Um, so yeah, I hope that sort of answers your question, but it didn't really. <laughs> Not at all. Um, <laughs> also, I'm going to Google the word fluctuant a little bit later. But I think, um, I guess the question is more likely, uh, do you think they'll play in the grand final or at least return to the best form? It doesn't necessarily mean they'll make the grand final. Uh, if they can get Papley back, I think he's really important. Uh, yes. And Heaney needs to lift as well. He was a Brownlow like, favourite at the start of the year. And now he just hasn't been anywhere near that. Um, so if he can get going, if they can get Papley back in the team, Yes. Um, if not, they've probably peaked too early in the season. Yeah, I, uh, I I think there's a good time to slump, and I think they're in it. It's just that this slump has been alarming. And I, I saw on useless AFL stats, they tweeted that this is the worst run of form ever by a top side for five games who has ended that period also in top spot. Um, almost every other time that, like, or in the top rankings there, most teams didn't win the premiership. The last time it happened was like 120 years ago. So just something to suck on there for you, Drews. Let's talk about the Brisbane Lions. They're, um, like, I don't think we need to analyze how good they are because they're clearly probably, uh, well, the form side of the competition, in my opinion, won so many games in a row, all of their last five, including the win over the Swans. Do you think they are currently premiership favourites? Well, their list demographic and where they've been in the last few years, like you'd expect Brisbane to win a flag at some point. I think they're the most winningest side over the last five years. They've been forced into... That's a word. Winningest is a word. Yeah, I I think that word is probably a little bit fluctuant, but I'll continue. (laughs) 
They've been forced to change a lot of their side through injury this year. Coleman going down, Gardner. Um, Charlie Cameron hasn't been in the best of form this year. So, like, they look a lot different to they have in previous seasons. And I've loved what I've seen from the young guys coming through. Like, I already think that Kyle Loman is a top 10 small forward in the competition. Um, just as a sense of the moment, doesn't shy away, kicks great goals. Um, yeah, works his way around the ground well. He's, he's a proper player. They've got a really good one there. Um, probably a good shout for the Rising Star this year, to be honest. Loved watching him play this year. Then Jasper Fletcher on the wing, just looks a player, just um, does everything right. Uh, Logan Morris has come in and done good things. Um, and then down back, Dane Zorko's having a great, um, probably all Australian year off of half back. Uh, Ashcroft's back in the side. So they look different to they to how they looked last year and maybe that could give them a bit more X factor to they they were already an attacking side but go even more attacking use the flair of guys like Ashcroft um, and these young fellas because when they have the ball in hand they're dangerous yeah I think you make some really good points there Brisbane's list has been very resilient towards injury for a few years while they've been contending and they haven't really cycled through the list that much they've been forced to this year with a whole heap of injuries early in the year like how many ACLs did they have and mm. they've turned over uh, well, they've been able to expose players in different roles and, and different uh, positions and different players in general. And I think that has been a resounding success. I suppose the only argument against the Lions is, are they peaking too, or maybe too early or at the wrong time? Um, it's hard to know because there are a lot of veterans in that team, very experienced, and they are burning with the fire of failure last year, not failure, but a missing out last year, the heartbreak. That is a little mm. bit of a wild card here. And I think that works in their favor. But, um, you know, I, mind you, I did think that Carlton and GWS might burn out by the finals last year, and I got that wrong. Um, so I think Brisbane are not rightfully the number one seed. Drews, I have one other team here, in my personal opinion, that I cannot imagine miss the finals. Uh, every other team, I think, well, I mean, five of the next, four of the next five will play finals, but this team is the final one that I can't see blowing it up. And that is your boys, Fremantle, who yes! you ambitiously predicted would play in the grand final and beat Carlton this year. So we'll put that to one side. Um, what have you made of Fremantle? How legitimate are they as a contender? Um, everyone can tune out. I'm going to let Drewzy talk about this for a bit. <laughs> and everyone just skips forward about nine minutes. Nah. It's just been so rewarding to see like every area of improvement that we've required throughout the rebuild has been sorted in the next season. So 2022, we were a good side. 2023, we thought it'd just come to us, but we weren't consistent. Like we'd have good games and then wouldn't show up the next week. And this year we've had consistent effort all throughout the year. Um, minus, you know, that game against the dogs and probably West coast earlier in the year. Um, but defensively, defensively really solid. Uh, Josh Drape has been a great addition down there. Got the rising star nom this week. I'd say our midfield is functioning better than any side in the comp. We're one of the best. I think we are the best clearance side in the comp. Um, Hayden Young's move into the midfield has been sublime. Um, just so damaging in the front half of the field. Uh, Luke Jackson and Sean Darcy, the double ruck combo works and you can't dispute it. Uh, and then Josh Tracy has been one of the best key forwards in the comp as well. Uh, that's the, the long and short of it. Not to mention Caleb Sarong being a top five rated player in the competition at the moment. Genuine superstar of the game, Brownlow contender this year. Um, to go along with a lot of good pieces around that. It's really good for Fremantle to start building some awareness around the country that they are a football club and have existed <laughs> yeah. for some amount of time now. But over the last five weeks, they're the number two contested ball side, number one clearance side all year, in particular in the last five weeks as well. Uh, number one for scores from turnover in the last five, number four That's from massive from as well. Scores from mm. turnover is the stat that everyone talks about. Like, obviously, the defense isn't set when you can turn the ball over and you can break at speed. And Freo do have that speed. Frederick, Switkowski, Hayden Young getting on the outside, Jeremy Sharp. Yeah, we have so much speed. Once we get the ball from dispute or sort of a contest uh, to the outside, we're really hard to stop. Um, and with guys like Josh Tracy and Amos in the forward line, we are dangerous. Where I don't expect us to win the flag this year, Jesse, but we're also definitely entering the premiership window as this season comes to an end and i'd say we have a good shot at it and i know the players believe that uh they can go all the way as well i laughed at your ladder prediction you got up to the finals and i know you said it wasn't entirely serious but you're like oh away qualifying final free will win that yeah oh, free, win. free will win that grand final <laughs> against carlton oh free will win that <laughs> yeah no we've got we've got some big games coming up we still got to play essendon who are trying to fight for a spot in the eight uh, we've got Geelong, who are in the eight, GWS and Port Adelaide. So our run home is actually really tough. Um, so we could honestly end up 
you know, slipping into that bottom four off the top eight um, and not getting the double chance. But uh, we're going to need to earn some stripes, tick off those wins, um, and, yeah, build some genuine belief that we're one of the best sides in the competition heading into finals. Cool. So those are the three I'm personally willing to lock in. Let's shuffle sideways a little bit, and let's look at the teams we probably don't think we probably don't think are going to be realistically competing for finals. And uh, I asked you to consult the ladder as well, so we'll, we'll go through these teams briefly. But I reckon still mathematically you could go as far down as 13th with the Gold Coast Suns. Uh, depending on how they finish the season, obviously. We'll loosely consider them, but that means that you also include Collingwood, Melbourne, and dare I say it, Essendon, who are in horrid form at the moment, Mm. are still mathematically a chance. And it feels like everyone's kind of written Essendon off. You know, the media frenzy at the moment is how bad Essendon have been, but they could turn it around and beat Freo, and then that completely throws everything out of whack. So Essendon, Melbourne, Collingwood, Gold Coast, do you think any of these teams are a realistic chance of playing finals this year? Gold Coast are far too inconsistent. Can't win away from home. They're not going to be there for me. Collingwood just look a bit like fatigued, underdone, a bit slow. Like, yeah, I don't know. I don't know how good they'd be doing without Nick Dacos this season. I wouldn't say are a definite no because, you know, we've seen some of the footy that they've played this year and in the last 12 months and it's been pretty good. So I wouldn't write them out of it. Uh, Melbourne, I don't think will be there. No Petrarca, a bit underdone. Um, really young. I think they're sort of just going to go win-loss, win-loss and finish the season just outside, probably 10th. Essendon's an interesting one because like all this pressure that's building up in the horrid form that they're in, they're coming up against Frio this week or in good form and a lot of optimism and it almost feels like a fixture that is too good to be true. Like you just think, oh, Frio are in good form and play well at the MCG. Essendon are playing crap and they come together and Frio get over. But that's just not how football works. So I do see Essendon maybe getting a win or two that aren't expected to finish the season. And the last time, I think the last time they won was against Collingwood at the MCG and they played really well at the MCG led by Zach Merritt. However, saying that, if you can stop Zach Merritt, you can stop Essendon. I don't think they'll make finals. In ninth at the moment is Hawthorne and they're, they're a red hot crack to make it. Agreed. I think that all of those teams have big question marks and it's just so competitive for that top eight spot and they're coming from a little bit further back. It is worth noting at Essendon, like everyone's heaping on them at the moment and that's justified. Their efforts have been poor in the last couple of weeks, but they haven't actually ruined their season just yet. They can yeah. technically still make it back. It's just, I suppose, to what extent the players buy into that. I will point out a few interesting stats here just before we move on. Melbourne are the number one ground ball gets side in the last five weeks, which is interesting. Um, Hawthorne have been number one this entire season and like historically, uh, like top six ever, I think, was the stat rolled out a few weeks ago. Um, bottom four for clearance, though. I, the thing is, the way I see Melbourne and Collingwood, that they're probably the two most likely to really disrupt the finals race. And yeah. In particular, Collingwood's got Carlton this week, and I think I think I've tipped Carlton, but I uh, I just don't know with Collingwood. Hey, like I feel like they could really fuck shit up and just beat <laughs> Carlton and, and just throw this into whack. So, before we move on, I will point out one more thing about Collingwood. Stats profile over the last five weeks is horrendous. One win over Richmond most recently, four losses. Their bottom four for meters gained, bottom two for contested ball, last for uncontested ball. So they're bottom two in both possession stats. They're last for ground ball gets, they're last for marks. They're 18th in the league in the last five weeks for inside 50 differential. They're number one for clangers. One thing they do have going for them is they're a top two tackling side. (laughs) Other than that, that's stats profile. I mean, I realized that when Collingwood are good, the stats didn't always indicate why, but um, that just really speaks to how bad their form Mm. has been. And if it wasn't Collingwood, I wouldn't even include them But because uh, I don't think they're playing that way. But like I said, they can disrupt shit big time. Yeah, so let's, for sure. So let's talk about the, um, the genuine finals race. So I've got these teams, Carlton, GWS, Geelong, Port Adelaide, the Western Bulldogs, and Hawthorne. I've named six teams, forgive me. And <laughs> six must become five, Druzy. Yeah. So let's go through them individually. So G, uh, well, let's start with Carlton. Mm-hmm. Do you think Carlton should be top four on talent? I know this is hard for you to be unbiased. On talent, they would probably have one of the best spines in the league, I'd say. Kerno, Mackay, like as good key forwards as you get. Cripps, probably the Brownlow favourite. Weedering has got to be all Australian this year. And then like they're, they're running half back, Saad, Newman. Um, they just can't keep a healthy team on the park. That's the problem with Carlton. And all this talk about, you know... Uh, Doherty coming back and playing on the wing because Hollands has been struggling for form a little bit this year. It's like, you really got to bring back a guy that's done two ACLs back in a, the same season that he did his ACL. 
when your injury list and recurrence of injuries has been horrible this year, like there's my bias coming through, but it's just like the thought that Sam Doherty could come back and play finals this year just baffles me. I think their midfield, just with Paddy Cripps, can win any game because he can turn it on. Chera hasn't been playing too great a footy as of recent. And yeah, you need that clearance dominance to win games, which is what gives me confidence as, you know, like a side like Frio or Brisbane or a side like that. Like if you can not stop Crips because it's pretty much impossible to but he is clearly their number one guy and then the guys like Hewitt um, Kennedy Chera and even Walsh to a certain degree just haven't been playing the footy they're capable of Um, so on talent should they be a top four side is the question I'd probably say no to be honest has the footy that they've played this year been off a top four standard absolutely but in terms of list quality I would argue that yeah, Brisbane and GWS. And then just biasly Frio and Sydney. <laughs> Probably have a better list. <laughs> <laughs> I think Carlton's list is outstanding. I think they're probably under-delivering a little bit, but there is still a bit of time and season to go. And if they finish top four and go deep, then they probably have delivered on that. I think it's um, like outside of the spine. You know what I mean? Like, they've got the absolute star yeah. power, yes, undeniably. But then, like, no disrespect to these guys, but, yeah, just the role players like Hollands and Motlop, they're young players, but they're just not, they're not peaking. They're not playing to their potential every week. They're a little, just a little bit fumbly in that type of thing. Uh, mm. Defensively, they're just not a sound defensive side. And that's what's keeping them out of the premiership window at the moment, I feel, is that they're just not hard to score against. Um, like Port Adelaide had, had a field day on them. They had no answer for Asaba Radaglia, who's hardly played forward this year. Interestingly on that, so Carlton, particularly last year, if I'm remembering this correctly, their stoppage game was um, their superpower, right? Yeah. And this year, only one team has conceded more from stoppage this year, and that's my boys, the West Coast Eagles, where Fresh did something. <laughs> and that's but embarrassing. That's it. It's true, though. 17th in the league from for that, considering their midfield, is surprising. Mm. Um, I think they can fire in finals based on last year. I think they st- stood up really well um, in their first final series from almost every player on that list. But I think going f- deep from fifth, if they were to finish fifth, might be tougher this year. But when you look at how many interstate teams are in that top four, mm. you know, if they, if they play an away final against Fremantle or Sydney or Brisbane, um, albeit they did beat Brisbane in opening round, um, I think that task it gets a lot harder this year compared to last year when they had two games at the MCG. Let's talk about the Giants, though. Before we move on, if they got a game at Optus, I wouldn't be surprised if they won it because they have a way of paying the arms before games to beat Frio. Let's leave it at that and let's move on. I've seen it too many times. Vic Bias. Oh, and there goes my video retention. All right. <laughs> the Giants, on the other hand, are a very much an anywhere, anytime sort of team and probably could go deep from sixth. So they are a very strong uncontested ball. So generally speaking, their stats are very uncontested. They like to mm. control the footy on the outside. They're not very strong in clearance. The bottom five, actually. Um, but they are the number one tackling side. And they're double the second best over the last five weeks. Also top five in scoring from defensive half. And that is basically what we're describing there is the orange tsunami and their outstanding ball movement. Mm -hmm. You have been pretty pro Giants, I feel like, Drew, in terms of like you you highlight what's good about them and they've won four of their last five. So are they a realistic outside contender at least? 100%. I feel like the best football that has been played this year in my mind, other than like how the Hawks are playing now maybe, but like... Early on in the season, the Orange Tsunami just tore teams to shreds. And they have just they are so stacked in every line. It feels like they've got four genuine key forwards, rock solid defensively with all Australian quality down there. But they've got some, some young players going through there now. Harvey Thomas and Darcy Jones providing a lot of leg speed. It's interesting about the clearance numbers because Tom Green and Finn Callahan you'd think would be able to get the job done, but maybe just not there quite there yet. Although we have seen great signs from them. Finn Callahan has been so nice to watch this year. Um, I don't feel like there's any reason that the Giants can't make the grand final based on the footy that they've played this year and the list that they've got. I agree on talent, and uh, they're one of those teams, uh, which is rare for an interstate side as well. It's just like, I, I don't think that playing away in a final is going to bother them. So they were a wild card, and they started the year extremely well, went off a little bit, and their last five has been pretty good. Just one loss to Sydney in that time. So I give them some credits. They're, they're hanging around and they could be a wild card here, although I don't consider them in the obviously in the locks yet, but they'll probably make it. Let's talk about Geelong. They're an interesting one year, really interesting case study this year of starting the year 7-0. and What did they lose? Four or five in a row? I want to say maybe four. Um, and then they've won four of their last five, albeit mm-hmm. one loss to the Bulldogs at home was horrendous. 
So surprisingly, they're actually tracking really well in hardball gets. They're the number one side in the competition in the last five weeks. Bottom four from scores from stoppages conceded. The thing that I think about the Cats, though, I, think, I look at them as more of a side in transition. They've got mm. a younger crop of players that are really starting to shine. And they've got some veterans hanging on. And I don't think that is going to be conducive to them going deep in September. Do you agree? Yeah, absolutely agree. They're not going to be in a prelim or win the flag this year, the Cats. Like, when you're playing Tom Stewart and... You know, Dangerfield is an absolute champion, but hasn't played his highest level of footy consistently this year. Their, their midfield just can't, like, hack it for four quarters at the moment, and that's what's costing them games. I think against the Dogs, I was at that game at GMHPA. It was just a really wet night. You sort of put a line through that game, but I just feel like the midfield stoppages, clearances, it's an important start to get field position. If they're playing away from home... Um, they're going to be very gettable early on in finals, I reckon. Uh, yeah, I tend to agree, which Cats fans won't like. I think the other thing we consider here, right, is look at their form against some of the good teams of the competition. So I'll give them credit for smashing Hawthorne. That is an outlier in many senses. Was that Hawthorne GMHBA? Played, it was GMHBA, but they also got slaughtered by the Bulldogs at the same ground. Um, so I'll give them credit. Weather conditions, credit. weather conditions. Yeah. Um, but there are other losses. They've lost three games at home to other sides we're talking about in this video. They lost to the Bulldogs heavily. They lost to the Giants early this year. They also lost to the Power early this year. There are also mm. losses to Carlton and the Brisbane Lions. So their record, just skimming off the top, has not been super compelling. So yep. I think Geelong will get there. I think they're a good enough home and away team. They'll win enough games to get there. Um, but I don't see them going deep. The thing with Geelong is they Sorry. Geelong also have the easiest run home out of all these teams, right? Like they've got Adelaide yeah. at home. So they've got the Crows at home this week. Uh, they got oh, they, they have Frio, so yeah. Hopefully not going to win that one. <laughs> uh, oh, St Kilda, to be fair, is a hard game. Like a couple of weeks yeah. ago, this looked like. But then they finished the season with West Coast. So um, two absolute oh, yeah. chalk up Ws um, and then two toughies. Yeah, they'll get, they'll get a 200 point buffer on West Coast as well. <laughs> yeah. Oh my God. Uh, let's talk about Anthony's team, the pair. Another really hard team to get a read on. And every time I come to a conclusion about where they're at, they yeah. dip the other way. So they're coming off a good win against the Blues at Marvel Stadium. Um, four out of their last five. You know, I feel like at times they've been a bit of a letdown this year, but overall they've kept their um, kept themselves in the, the mix for this, even dare I say, at top four. They can still make it. Um, it's just my perception that I don't feel like this, this Port Adelaide side's probably hasn't been as good as the one over the last few years. But they are number one uh, in the competition for marks inside 50 differential. So they're getting the ball inside 50 and hitting targets. They're also number one for scores from stoppages. So that, those are pretty compelling stats. And no team has more scores per inside 50, which uh, speaks to a forward line efficiency. Because on paper, I feel like it's not a super settled forward line. Obviously, like Dixon's gone in there. They've had injuries. Um, Georgie Addis has played all right this year, to be fair. Um, anyway, let's talk about how likely we think Port Adelaide A are going to make it and B, go deep. What do you think of the power? Yeah, Port will be there, I reckon. Their midfield's good enough. Like Their forward line's potent. Sort of identity-wise in defence, they've got it there. It's just the team defence. It's like the midfielders, the forwards bringing the pressure in the front half um, to stop the ball transitioning from their forward line to defence. I think that's what they really struggle with most at the moment, Port. Um but when they, you know, dominate the ball and field position, they're a really hard side to stop. So um, I think they'll make it, but just need a... Yeah, I don't think they're the end product yet. Um, also want to point out, they were one team that beat the Dogs quite convincingly, um, mm, admittedly, admittedly at home. I think the power will make it. One thing that works... Well, one thing that will be really telling about them is there's another showdown, Drews. Now, they mm. have entered the last three showdowns as favourite and lost them all fairly convincingly, I want to say, like five goals at a time. If they are serious this year, when considering where Adelaide's at at the moment, that is going to be very interesting to see if they can lift for that and really consolidate a top six position, if not top four. I can't help but notice we've, we've pretty much said the top seven are all going to make it. So we have two <laughs> teams left to talk about. And there is one spot up for grabs. We'll start with... Well, these are two of the form sides of the competition. We'll start with the Western Bulldogs, who are, um, you know, just coming off a big win over the Sydney Swans. I think early this year, there was a bit of a narrative around them that were under-delivering. I think it was on the back of a loss to Hawthorne, right as Hawthorne got good. Yeah. So at the time, that seemed horrendous. 
And they lost to Frio in Perth, and at the time, Fremantle wasn't necessarily looking like this top four side either. There might have been other results around that. But since then, they've been sensational. Number three inside 50 differential team over the last five weeks. Second best team in the league for locking the ball inside 50. And like I said, wins at GMHBA. They've beaten the Blues. They've beaten the Swans. They had an off day against the Power for sure. But one of the former sides of the competition, what do you think of the Bulldogs? Yeah, just midfield uh, dominance and class that they've got in there when you have the best player in the comp. Um, Adam Trelaw has had a really good season. I think he's gone under the radar a little bit, but I feel like the modern game is starting to suit Adam Trelaw a little bit. Like over the past few years, I feel like it's been very bull sort of dominant, like your Petrarchas, Clayton Olivers, um, you know, like your contested beasts have sort of been your most important players. But now if you can sort of win the hard ball and then have the class on the outside, like, Trelaw does. I think he's having a really good season. Um, Libba just does Libba things. Um, Jamari Ugo Hagen's probably been one of the best forwards in the last sort of month, probably the best forward in the last month. I don't understand how they're getting away with playing Rory Lobb as a defender, though. I feel like if you're like defending your back 50, you're going to get exposed if you lose around the stoppages. But if they play in the front half, they have... Uh, Lobb and Liam Jones taking intercept marks. They can do that all day. So, yeah, it's really stemming from their um, field position, the dogs. If they're in the front half, they're probably, at the moment, form-wise, going to win games. But I feel like if it's more of a 50-50 game and it's going sort of end-to-end, they're going to get exposed down back. Yeah, the Lobb one's interesting. Um, You know, I feel like it can work if your midfield is putting enough pressure up the ground so to ensure that the opposition inside 50 is coming in loopy. They're coming in fast and hot. The 211, 209 centimeter Rory Lobb will struggle to defend that. But as a floating interceptor, it's worked really well. Mm. So I think the Bulldogs on form, I hope they make it because I think their form is so compelling that I would hate to see them miss out. And we yeah. know that they can be a dangerous side in finals. Look at 2016, look at 2021, where they both times they came out from outside the top four to play in a grand final. But there's another disruptor in all of this in Hawthorne, who mm. remarkably sit outside the eight, considering the form run since probably that win against the Bulldogs that I've mentioned. They have won four of their last five, one big loss to the Cats. Again, that's their outlier. They smash West Coast and the Crows away from home. They beat the Dockers in Tassie. They beat the Pies. So not, not, nothing really incredible about the last five weeks. I mean, the Pies win was a yeah. dismantling, and I think that was compelling. And to be fair, so were the Eagles and Crows games. To beat the Crows in Adelaide, despite the fact that they're not you know, a great team at the moment, they're, they're still pretty good at home usually. I, I was still impressed by that, but... Number one inside 50 differential team over the last five weeks. Number three, contested ball side as well. So their contested game has been really strong. And we know that, like I said earlier, historically good at ground ball gets. Did you, did I write in thinking you had Hawthorne Knight? Yeah, I could see them sneaking in though, because they've got GWS and Carlton and they probably win one of those. So I could see them sneaking in um, and maybe even like a Geelong dropping out, to be honest. And that makes room for the dogs and Hawthorne. Um, there's going to be a lot more twists. Their forward line's just so zippy. Like it's not uh, a tall forward line, but their smalls are guns. Like Ginnivan has had a massive year. Dylan Moore, um, the wizard, is dangerous and loves drawing a free kick. I'm pretty sure they have four of the top rated players for getting free kicks in the AFL. Like four of the top five all play in Hawthorne's forward line. I think Bruce <laughs> is the other one. But yeah. yeah the, uh, been playing great footy. Other than that Port Adelaide loss, like if you look at the body of work in the, well, ever since then, it's been incredible. So, um, yeah, they you're not going to want to come up against them. At the same time, they're still very young. So, yeah, if they were to come up against your side at a home ground, if it was Brisbane or uh, GWS or Sydney or Frio, I think you'd probably go in with a little bit of confidence that you just have a little bit more experience. Um, but that's not to take anything away from the footy that they've played all year because they've been so fun to watch. Yeah, the the body of work. I mean, I just spoke about that the last five weeks and there wasn't too many good teams they beat, but the body of work over an extended period of time now is leading me to think there's a lot more evidence that Hawthorne will be a good team come finals. They just need to make it. So like I said, I think we've just discussed nine teams there that deserve to make it. And I think whoever misses out... We'll look back at this season and go, how the hell do we miss? Unless it's Hawthorne who haven't actually been inside the eight yet. You mm. know what I mean? Like, how the hell do we not make play finals this year? And I think there is a gap to the next bunch. And we can sit here and, and make predictions. So, like, I did a ladder predictor a few weeks ago. I think, 
think I had Hawthorne yeah. missing out. And then I just did one before we started this video is just to test a few different outcomes. And I had GWS in ninth and that feels wrong. In both cases, I had the Bulldogs in fourth spot. What it really will come down to is how these teams perform in the last four weeks. And there's some key clashes I want to go through. So there's three pretty big perform- uh, games in the last in this coming round. Sorry, We've got the Bulldogs versus Melbourne. We've got Port Adelaide versus Sydney. We've got GWS and Hawthorne. And there's also Carlton Collingwood to consider. Then next week, there's Carlton versus Hawthorne, and that game is huge for, you know, Carlton's going for top four, but Hawthorne probably need to win that to make finals. Then the following week, GWS versus Fremantle has huge implications. Then there's Western Bulldogs and GWS at Ballarat. Uh, That's currently listed as the final get match day of the season. I don't know how they'll fixture that. I think that's coming out soon. And then we finish the season with Fremantle versus Mm. Port Adelaide. So there's so many 50-50 contests that I probably missed one that will ultimately decide this. If I had to get you to lock it in, would you say Hawthorne at this current I, point? You can't, you can't at this point. I, but nah, I agree. Yeah, if anyone was to fall out of that list, out of the top eight right now, I think it'd be Geelong, I reckon. Sorry, Geelong fans. It would take probably an unexpected loss to the Crows at GMH Bay. Well, and St. Kilda are playing to be honest, well. We've seen crazy St. things St. Kilda are playing year. really well. St. Kilda so are playing well. If they, yeah. And I wouldn't, yeah. tip them, I wouldn't tip them against Freo adopters. Yeah, so if they drop Frio and drop St. Kilda and Hawthorne continue this streak that they're on, we could see Hawks in the finals. It's unreal. I don't think I've ever seen a finals race like this. But thank you very much, Druzy, for joining me. Anyone who enjoyed this chat, leave a like, leave a comment. Um, and jo- go check out Druzy's channel as well for plenty of AFL content. Druzy, it's been a pleasure. Go Frio! Okay, all right, I'm just going to end it there.